Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the series. Uh, today, I'm joined with uh, Steve McGuire again. How are you, Stephen? Very well, thank you, Tom. That's the way, that's the way. Understand today that we're diving into the diagram properties window. That's right, Tom. The properties window is an incredibly useful window. It's one of the windows that sits beside the main canvas. And there are many functions or features on the window that, for some reason, many people don't know about. So we're going to cover some of those features today. I've been working on some strategy diagrams and up here in the perspective, you can see that I've got strategy there. I'm going to set my perspective to all UML. We've still been focusing on some of the UML diagrams in this, these videos. So let's first open a diagram using the navigation cells. So here we have requirements, models, behavior and structural. Let's click through into this one and let's open our favorite class model. Remembering this, this is a diagram that you often start a project with. It describes the important entities in the domain that you're working in. I'm going to close some of these other windows, give us a bit more space there. Now I can see the diagram. Now clicking in the canvas of the diagram and not on any particular element, you'll see that the properties window is displayed there. And remembering I can always drag that, that properties window off. I can drag it onto another screen or I can just float it uh, like that, or in fact, you know, place it in any other location. But I'll put it back in its uh, default position here, and I'll move uh, this down, this bar down. So just rearranging my interface there a little bit, Tom. The, the, the property that most people know about is the name. So that's an obvious one, and the type, the class. The stereotype we'll have a look at in a little bit. Uh, the author there, and look at that, I can change uh, the author. And one of the ones we're going to look at here, here is the filter to context, a very useful property uh, when present presenting diagrams to an audience. So I click that one, check that box there. And when I click on elements in here now, what it's doing is it's the element that's my focus or my context there, it is highlighting or, or, or showing the elements that are directly related to that element. So in the case of parking meter, we've got display, parking session, parking. Um, payment reader. And as I click through, it's just giving me the context of the element that I'm on. So a very useful uh, feature. Back onto the diagram canvas, clicking onto the canvas. Um, I'm going to look at some other things here. Now I've got the diagram at version 1.0. So we have uh, some great features in the tool for uh, version and baselining and things. We're not going to look at those today, but let's look at the option filter to version. So I'm going to check that one and uh, what uh, what we'll see here is that all of those elements are currently at uh, version one. Now, if I was to go in into this element and change, well, let's change change the um, let's change this. Let's turn off the property here uh, that we said earlier, the context uh, filter to context one, and let's um, let's look at this filter to version one. So, with that on, it disguised what was happening with the versions. But let's have a look now back at the versions now. We've got filter to version, and you can see that two elements are, um, are shaded or, or, or kind of dimmed out, the vehicle and the near field. Now, what that's saying is that all the elements that are actually displayed in, you know, in the full appearance there, those elements are at version one. Now, if I go and look at this element here and click on this one, you'll see that that is a version two element, and the vehicle is a version two element. So Enterprise Architect has got the ability to define versions, which is very useful when you're working iteratively, like in, a, uh, in an agile project uh, or any other type of work that you're doing where you want to see a, a particular version. So that's a useful uh, feature. Now, we have seen this in other, this other property here, Tom, in other videos, but let's just quickly have a look at it. We've got the display, the diagram as. Enterprise Architect is a graphical tool, but it's also a tool that displays information in many other formats, in list views, in specification, uh, Gantt chart, relationship matrix. Let's have a look at just a simple one here. We'll change this to uh, a list view, saving the diagram first. And you can see now that my elements are in a list view. And I can easily drag things up here and uh, group them in by some of their properties and also add other properties. But let's get back to our, our graphical view. So uh, switch view, back to our graphical view. And there we are again, and clicking on the canvas. 
let's have a look at some other properties here. The hand-drawn property. Tom, one of my favourites. If I select that one, notice what's happened to the diagram. It's been rendered as though I drew it, uh, you know, on the back of a serviette. Really, a really useful thing when you're talking to stakeholders and showing them work that you've done. If you want to have an engagement with the stakeholder, it's often best to allow them to contribute and collaborate with you on the development of the model and have input into it. Clicking this option into hand-drawn gets the idea across that this is not set in concrete, that they've still got the opportunity to contribute to this model. And so it, uh, it, it creates a very interesting uh, and sort of view of, of it that it's unfinished and can be contributed to. But I can just flick it back, right, to the other one after my meeting and say, okay, um, that's uh, now back in its uh, rendered in you know, geometric form there. The, the other one I've got is a, a whiteboard one where it's as if I drew this on a whiteboard, right? All the colors gone, uh, the, the elements are there. And if I use these in combination with each other, that really now starting to look like a whiteboard, yeah? So uh, a, a powerful, another powerful option and being able to combine those together. Custom style is uh, another option that we've got here and uh, it, it changes the display in a way to remove many of the standard uh, visualization of the of the language in this case uml and now the the elements are, are rendered differently without you know any of their kind of uml compartments and things and i will then get the option uh, to look at this and choose uh, some of these options here and i can say i want to change this element to a rounded uh, rectangle for example uh, and i want to change uh, the the name up into the top left. So lots of options there, Tom. I'm not going to go into them uh, in detail here. We'll just go back and follow our path through the custom style. That's the uh, subject of a of another video for sure. There we go. We click that off again, and we're back again at our standard standard view. Now this next option, Tom, is uh, is incredibly useful. The collapse embedded elements. We haven't got embedded elements on this diagram, so let's go to one that we do, and let's use our a little. Uh, backtrack here and we'll go back to a component model and here's a component model now these are the logical components that are making up the system so a, a, typically a solution architect has drawn these and they've used a number of different embedded elements you've got uh, ports there and we've got interfaces so there's an exposed interface there uh, we've you know we've got provided and, and um, and required interfaces. Now watch what happens when, again, I click in the diagram canvas and say collapse embedded element. It, I'll click it again so that you can see uh, the change that it's, that's, it's making. You can see that it just collapses all of those embedded elements, including, uh, including the interfaces and the ports, making it a much simpler diagram. And Tom, as always, a diagram is drawn for a particular audience. The audience might be yourself, but it's typically other stakeholders. This diagram, uh, in the way it is now, is for a perhaps an audience that isn't uh, super technical, but the one that is technical and wants to see this other information can have these ports and interfaces visible. So lots of options there. Let's return back to our class diagram and continue on by clicking in the canvas and look, look at some other things. So we've looked at uh, these ones, uh, dashboard style. We're gonna uh, flip over these ones and we'll look at those uh, a little bit later in another video. The support collaboration, again, we're gonna have a video on collaboration. We'll deal with that uh, more fully at that time. The theme, I can change the theme. At the moment it's saying use the global theme. So all the diagrams in the, in the model would be uh, on that, uh, based on that theme. But I can change that to a different theme say I want ocean breeze. Now notice these elements that I've uh, that have got a fixed display are not changing, but the other elements, uh, the other elements are. And I can change that to all sorts of different uh, different things. A desert one, for example, and you can see now that um, they're changing. So that's the diagram theme. Uh, again, a useful thing when you are presenting things, particularly in 
situations where you're doing documentation, you might have high contrast, contrast white and black. I can do blueprint as well. You see that looks like a, uh, a blueprint. But let's put it back onto um, the, the global theme. So that's been defined in the preferences and that one there uh, goes back into that standard uh, view. The, there are a number of other options that we'll look at, Tom. One of them is this option here, uh, fully scoped object names. Um, so let's turn that on. And um, actually, that won't display in this particular diagram, but let's look at the uh, element lock status. Now, if you notice carefully, two little icons have popped up here on the diagram. We haven't talked about locks before, but the, both these elements are locked, but in different ways. This element, the parking session, is locked to everyone. I can't even edit it myself unless I change the lock. This one here is locked uh, to other people, but not to me. So let's have a quick look at how that, how that happens. In the lock element here, we can see that we've got lock options, no lock, general, and we can go through all those. This is a full lock, no one may edit. So for some reason, someone's decided to lock that completely. And this one over here is a has got a different lock on it, and it's the user uh, lock. Locking user may still edit, but no one else. So incredibly powerful, Tom. Interesting there, Stephen. So if I was to so want to lock some of the elements that I've worked on, do I need to go through and lock every element individually, or is there ways of doing bulk locks? Oh, that's a great question, Tom, because that's you know that comes up a, uh, a lot. So let's say that we had our requirements model and we had a our stakeholder meetings and our sign off and all those requirements uh, were actually signed off. And we don't want people uh, you know going and changing them unless there's some you know reason for it. So what we can do is here we can go in here and we can look at uh, package control and lock package. And if you look at this, Let's say it's a full lock, no one can edit, as we don't want anyone to do that. Um, and you can see here the options, process child packages. What that's going to do, it's gonna lock elements and lock diagrams, got both those options checked. So you don't want someone um, just being able to go into a diagram and change something. So it's gonna lock the diagram as well and process child packages and watch what happens. So now um, all of these elements are locked, yeah? and. Uh, I can do, you know, there are a number of different options for that. I can lock it to a particular group. So you may say, look, the requirements management group has got the, the right uh, to work on some elements. And of course, Tom, uh, you know, you would use facilities like the baselining facility after a sign-off meeting and baseline that. And even if someone uh, did, who had permission to change it, did change it, you could roll back to previous um, versions of that, including diagrams with the new timelines uh, facility. So let's um, let's let's just go on a little bit here. We've we've nearly covered most of the things that I wanted to look at uh, in detail. So look at this one here, info tip. I I find that not too many people use this, and it's a very useful feature. So we'll click on this one, and I'll turn off the element lock status. Although I can you know I can leave that on. They can uh, these can be sort of chained together. But if I look at this um, info tip, look what happens when I roll over a class. Uh, metadata pops up. And so I can see that this is a parking meter. It's of type class. It's approved. The status is approved. It's version one and phase one. And we've got some uh, text there, which is the notes. Now, if I roll over this one, you can see that um, that's proposed. So it hasn't been validated or anything. And it's version uh, two and phase one. And again, the notes are there. So that's, a, again, a useful thing for anyone. But I particularly like it when I'm presenting things uh, because you know, I don't necessarily want to be continually talk, telling people to go over to the properties window and I can just show them this information there. So another very useful, useful property there. The, the other properties uh, we're not going to look at in detail, but one I do want to mention here is the fact that we've got this WebEA and Prolaborate, which are the two web-based tools. Now, I haven't uh, I haven't configured those inside the tool, but what that would allow you to do is if it was configured uh, as a, a application on our pro cloud server, it would uh, show URLs there that I could put into a mail message, um, you know, uh, give it to someone as to as a, a URL to get be able to get to uh, this particular diagram in those web views. So 
a really powerful thing, Tom. If someone was doing some work in a, in, a, in another developers are working in uh, another application and they wanted to be able to see these diagrams, then they could just uh, be given that URL through an integration uh, inter integration uh, feature, and they would be able to view this diagram across the web. I guess it'd be uh, quite useful for those who, as you said, working with stakeholders who may not necessarily be modelers, but if you wanted to show them your whiteboard diagram. Um, and, and without them having to install and load up Enterprise Architect, then you can just pass them that link to and they could just view it on, on the web? Yeah, that's exactly right, Tom. And not, not, not only that, the Collaborate product has got, you know, an, an, an incredible myriad and range of different views that aren't even diagram views. Uh, they're, you know, all sorts of other visualizations of the repository information uh, and people can see it. But, you know, the diagrams that are there and you may you may create particular diagrams that you want for particular audiences. And so it's those diagrams that you you may want to display. So you want to want to turn off some of the, uh, you know, some of the features or visualizations and, um, you know, and you can do that with that uh, feature. So that's. Um, they're the main things that I wanted to talk about, Tom, with the properties window. And I just encourage people to, to experiment with some of them themselves and to use them in their work because they really are productivity tools and show the power and flexibility of different visualizations for different audiences. So uh, that's the properties window, Tom. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that, Stephen. I'd be uh, really curious to know in the comments section uh, what, what tips you've sort of picked up today. Um, what, what, what's something in the properties window that, that uh, Stephen's shown you that, that you might not have known? Um, for me, uh, I think the, the info tip was, was probably the most exciting one. Uh, I, I don't use that often myself, so I think I might have to in future. Thank you very much for your um, time today, Stephen. Um, really Always appreciate pleasure, it. Tom. And thanks to everyone out there in YouTube land. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe on our videos. Uh, tap the bell icon, I'm told. Uh, actually helps with the notifications. And uh, we'll see you all back tomorrow for another video.